In this seventh video for activity two, we're going to jump over to Excel and use a tool called Solver to solve for break even. We already did these calculations manually in the previous videos, but now we're going to use a little Excel magic to help us to quickly make these calculations. Before we jump into the Excel magic, I want you to go back to the spreadsheet that we used earlier for activity two. This was the revenue and cost spreadsheet where we input the variables for Nike, calculated revenue and cost in a table, and then charted that information here as well. Let's change our table so that instead of increasing by one unit each time, we increase by five units. We've looked at that before and we noted that our table updated as did our chart over here. If you remember from our manual calculation, break even was 33.33 or 34 units. So that falls right here in between 30 and 35 units. So I just increased by five because that got our numbers a little bit higher so that we could actually see that break even point before we were going, only going up to 15 units and now we're going up to 75 so we can actually see uh, the 33 units here. With the data we have now, we can see break even a couple of different ways. First, in our table, we can find where revenue and cost are equal. And in this case, revenue and cost are equal somewhere between 30 and 35 units. I know that because at 30 units, cost still exceeds revenue. And at 35 units, that switches, where revenue now exceeds costs. So somewhere in between 30 and 35 units, revenue equals costs, or profit, which is just revenue minus costs, equals zero. This was consistent with the manual calculation that we did of break even at 33.33 units. We can also see break even in the graph. Take a second to find break even in the graph. You should be pointing to where the revenue and cost lines intersect, right here. Right there at the number of units at that intersection, revenue and cost are equal. Again, it's somewhere between 30 and 35 units is where that intersection lies. So that's again consistent with the 33.33 units. Now, Let's go into some Excel magic to get the exact number of units. We're going to use a tool called Solver, which you will frequently use in your statistics class and potentially other classes as well. I want to jump back to your note packet for a minute to get some understanding of Solver before we try to use it in Excel. So in your note packet, I want you to get this chart down along with a couple of rules about Solver. I'll also give you a sneak peek of Solver to explain this chart. In the next video, we will open up the Solver tool in Excel and get some practice. First, in this chart, I show you the language that Solver uses. This is a screenshot of Solver. You can see that my chart aligns with the labels that Solver uses. Set objective, two, and we have a couple of options here, max, min, or value of, and we can set the actual value by changing variable cells. Now that you've seen Solver, you know where I'm getting the language that's in this chart here. So let's go back and fill in some definitions of these terms, as well as match them to the Nike variables. Solver starts with set objective. In Solver, we will cell reference to a cell for set objective. This cell must contain a formula that we want to set to a certain value. We will tell Excel to what value we want to set the objective cell. That set amount will go in the area labeled two, which is the second component in our table here. In the case of a break-even analysis, our goal is to set profit. So I reference that here with a Nike variable. We're trying to set profit equal to zero so in our spreadsheet, we will need to have a cell that calculates profit for us using a formula. Remember, the rule is that this set objective cell has to have a formula in it. So we'll have a formula that calculates profit, and we'll tell Excel 
that we want that profit calculation to equal zero. Finally, we have an area that Excel labels by changing variable cells. This cells is where we would have our actual variable. This variable is what we want to change in order to achieve the objective we have set. In this case, in this Nike problem, we are trying to solve for units. So we will need a cell that has units in it, that would be our variable cell, and that cell will need to feed into our profit formula. So this by changing variable cell is basically our Q. It's the variable in an algebraic formula for which we are trying to solve. So in summary, what this table is telling us is we are trying to tell Excel to set profit equal to zero by changing the number of units. In this explanation, I alluded to a couple of rules we need to remember in Solver. Let's make sure to summarize those. First, your objective cell must be a formula. Second, one of the variables in that formula must be the by changing cell. So whatever you cell reference as the variable cell or the, or the by changing variable cells needs to be included. It needs to be a variable part of the formula you have in your set objective cell. So in this case, when we change the number of units, profit must also change. That means our profit formula must be cell referenced to the number of units. In the next video, we will set up Solver in Excel. If this explanation is not making complete sense yet, that's okay. After we go over in Excel, it should make more sense. And if it doesn't, then I recommend that you come back and review this video again. We'll go on to the next video and practice in Excel.